five, four, three, two, one. Hi everyone and welcome back. Like I promised in the last video, this project is a bit intense. Today I'll be challenging myself to make an entire doll appear like glass. This was definitely something new to me, but since my school got a new resin 3D printer, I wanted to give it a try. To make the glass effect more dramatic, I decided to go for an elegant robot design. I used these images I collected from Pinterest to help solidify my ideas. Because resin is the closest doll making material to glass, I need to completely 3D print this guy out of resin from head to toe. So, after deciding I want to switch things up a bit and make this character a dude, I went straight to modifying a partially unfinished doll file of mine in Blender. The footage here is kind of chaotic, but basically I'm beginning to joint the stiff model by slicing him into parts, keeping in mind where and how I want his future joints to function. I also take a big chunk out of his torso and replace it with an exposed spine. I wanted the spine pieces to be as realistic as possible, so I grabbed a file of a thingiverse and used it as a building block to form the spine. I then go back and make some parts more spiky just to add a bit of spice. I'll of course leave a link to the file in the description. I used the same file as the spine for his tail, but I stretched them out and made them ball jointed. Once I'm happy with everything, I go ahead and send the files to a printer slicer called Leechy and head off to my school's printer. plan for this guy to have a lighter color palette, which is why you see me starting to print his pieces in just clear resin. This would have worked great, but for some reason the parts would still have an annoying slight yellowish hue, even after playing around with the settings several times. This bothered me to no end, since I definitely wanted his accent color to be pure bright white. Of course, anyone knowing the struggle with whites will know that the pure white being so close to yellowy resin would just end up highlighting the unwanted yellow tones. So, this is when I decided that the darker colored resin would be a better way to go. This turned out to be for the best because it would not only make him look a lot cooler, but make him last a lot longer too. Since most crafting resins do yellow at some point, I figured the same would happen to this printing resin. If I kept him clear, he would most likely suffer from the much worse natural yellowing in the future, meaning I would have to keep reprinting and replacing his pieces every once in a while to keep him looking fresh. I definitely like the idea of making a completely clear doll, so I'll come back to that idea in a future project. Once his pieces are washed and cured, I go ahead and remove the supports and begin painting in his engravings. Naturally, it took a couple of layers to build up the white opaque enough to add the shimmery car paint white on top. You may have noticed that he's super dull right now. This is just a thing that happens when printing with clear resins. Washing the prints in alcohol just takes away the shine, but it's nothing a little UV resin can't fix. My workspace became an absolute mess curing all of these pieces with one tiny UV lamp. I did eventually buy a bigger one, which made this process so much less of a nightmare. Here you can see the UV resin gives him back his glorious transparency. Jumping back to his spine, I wanted it to really stand out, so I gave it a nice silvery metallic look with some chrome nail powder. I do the same thing for his tail later on, but because I didn't want to take any longer with getting this video out, I don't show me putting it together in this video. I'll do a little short video or something showing that part later. Side note. 
It's a lot easier to make your doll with all BJD joints, but in this case, I didn't want to run the risk of the elastic showing through his very transparent skin. So I first attempted to mimic a typical fashion doll joint instead. I end up going back and fixing this because making a typical fashion doll joint is very hard and you have to get the pieces extremely accurate for it to work. So yeah. To secure the lower parts of his leg, I used paperclip wire, then cut it down to size and sealed them off with rhinestones at the end. For his face. Now this doll's head is really small compared to what I'm used to, about the size of a kin head, but I still want to somehow try to give him inserted eyes. Now to finish him up, I'm cutting out his doll's head and his horn thingies out of acrylic using my school's laser cutters. Yes, I spent a lot of time on my school's printers, so of course I had to name them. They're too cool not to. Special shout out to my friends for modeling the horns for me. And once that's all done, I just put his pieces together and he's finished. Like always, thanks for watching, stay sweet, and I'll see you next time.